If it was the 1873 Winchester that won the West, then it is surely the Pepper Box revolver that won the East. Let me tell you the story of the early percussion revolvers of the 19th century. Firing more than one shot from a firearm was always a wish of every hunter or soldier, and the rotating cylinder was not the invention of the 19th century. Front-loading rotating drums holding multiplied charges were used from the end of the 16th century on matchlock, snap hands lock and flintlock firearms also. The first successful flintlock revolver was patented by Alicia Collier in Boston in 1818. They were neat pistols, but the cylinder had to be rotated manually. An option for reducing the size of the revolver was to completely abandon the barrel. This was the birth of the pepper box revolver. This Allen Turber pepper box is one of the most advanced pieces. It has a double action system, but no sights at all, showing that this pistol was meant to be shot from a point blank range. This is the true last line of defense. Let me show you this pistol and the history of the factory. This pepper box was patented by Ethan Allen in 1845, and it was the fastest shooting sidearm in America until the appearance of the real double action revolvers. Pepper boxes were manufactured in both Europe and in the US, in various calibers, barrel length, number of barrels and various quality. They were meant for the civilian market, but found their way to the military use as well, hidden in overcoat pockets. The real advantage of this pistol is the double action trigger system, meaning you just have to pull the trigger to rotate the cylinder and to fire the pistol. They are often called bar hammer revolvers, named after the strange shape of the hammer. It is surely a revolver, but the rotating and indexing mechanism is completely different from the cold designs, which was legally protected by those times. Let's check what's inside the belly of the beast. To disassemble the pistol, remove the barrels first. It's held by a single screw threaded into the axis. This is the back of the cylinder. On the outer side a rail is visible for the indexing pin, while on the inside the ratchet for the rotating hand is located. The nipples are not separate parts, they are machined out from the barrels, so they are not replaceable. The script on the barrel reads Allen and Thurber Company, Worcester, indicating that this particular piece was manufactured between 1854-56, and also the patenting date is visible on the barrels. The cylinder is rotated by a hand located on the left side of the frame, so even the direction of the rotation is different from the cold designs. There is no cylinder stop, just a spring the indexing pin. This is not such a great problem, as there is no barrel, so there is no need for a perfect indexing. The nipples are protected by a flash shield to prevent multiplied discharges. Only two screws are to be removed to open the mechanism. Removing the grip and the side plate offers a perfect view of the cycling of the trigger system. The heart of the mechanism is a strong main spring linked to the sear. The sear is responsible for connecting the hammer with the trigger and for the movement of the hand. This small coil spring belongs to the indexing pin. Below the sear the hand is visible, supported by another thin leaf spring. The cycle is initiated by the pull of the trigger. Pressing the trigger pulls the sear forward, which moves the hand and raises the hammer. The hand rotates the cylinder and when the trigger reaches the end position the sear disengages and the hammer falls. The key element in using a pepper box revolver is speed. Just point the pistol on your enemy and put the six shot into his body as fast as you can. But I'm a curious guy, so I want to check out how accurate this pistol is at 10 meters. Let's follow me to the range. 15 grains of 3F Swiss powder and the 315 ball was loaded into the 32 caliber bores with some paper wedding. This is not a strong load indeed, but surely enough for point blank self defense. Capping is a great challenge, I can imagine that for loading the barrels were removed from the frame. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first five shots. They went uphill somewhere. I have three in the target in a head size group, which is not bad for 10 meters for a smoothbore pistol like this. I was aiming somewhere here on the center of the target, but I think I will try aiming here, somewhere here next time. Sorry for the man. 
Pepper boxes were never officially issued to any troops during the Civil War, but as personal self-defense guns they surely saw some action. They can also be found on many old photographs. I tried to use the upper side of the barrel as a sight and held the pistol with two hands and still it was hard to fire a tight group at 10 meters, indicating that this pistol was not meant for such long-range work. In the late 40s and early 50s the pepper box revolver slowly lost the market due to the aggressive advertising policy of Colt, but of course the market was changing also, both the people and the army needed more accurate and stronger sidearms. Well, I have to say that this little cricket is not the most accurate revolver I have ever fired, but it plays an important part in firearms history. So, therefore, it makes a good topic for us. So, ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching the Cap Anvil YouTube channel. Thank you very much for being with me. And if you like what I do, then please hit the subscribe button. And if you wish, you can also support me on Patreon.com. So, stay cool and keep your powder dry. Until next time, see you.